Welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. This is part of a beginner series for people who want to get started with investing or trading stocks and other investments. And today we're going to talk about how do you buy stocks? How do you buy shares of stock, to be more specific? And if you, by the way, want more help with all of this, with uh, you know stocks, uh, you know trading, investing, how to buy stocks, uh, picking out stocks to buy, things like that, uh, and putting together an investing plan, which you definitely want to have if you're going to invest uh, successfully. Uh, my name is David Modell, and you can email me at that email address down there. It is davidmodell at gmail.com. All right, so how do you buy stocks or how do you buy shares of stock? Well, what you need to do, you can't, you can't just go anywhere. You can't just walk into any store and buy shares of stock, all right? Um, if you work for a, a company that offers uh, shares of stock, then sometimes you can buy the company's stock uh, directly from the company, okay? That is possible if you work at a company or if you, if you have connections with that company, sometimes you can do that. Sometimes you can buy what's called preferred stock, which is kind of an exclusive stock and uh, it offers a lot of times it offers uh, better dividends or you get divi you get paid dividends first uh, if the stock is liquidated or they get rid of the stock uh, people with preferred shares of stock usually tend to get paid first before people with common shares but that's that's a whole separate thing all right uh, in most cases you're gonna probably be buying common stock which just about anybody can buy who can afford it, all right? Uh, so common stock is just normal shares of stock on companies uh, like, you know, the ones that you know about probably, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Coca-Cola, Disney, ExxonMobil, uh, JP Morgan, so on and so forth, all right? Uh, there are many, many stocks. There are over 5,000 stocks on the New York Stock Exchange, so there are plenty to choose from. Uh, when you're first starting out, you might just want to start with the, the more famous ones, like I mentioned, but that's up to you. All right, You have to make your own decisions, of course. Uh, so how do you do it? Well, uh, first of all, you're probably going to want to have a bank account of some sort. Um, that's usually where you start, uh, such as with uh, Bank of America, maybe a checking or savings account, or Wells Fargo, something like that. All right. Uh, there are many banks out there. I'm not going to tell you which bank to use, but those are just a few examples. All right, so you set up a bank account and you probably want to put some money in there, okay? Um, how much money you start with is up to you. Uh, I recommend at least $500. Try to save up $500 if you can. Uh, if you can save up a couple thousand, that's even better. You'll be in a better position. Uh, but if you can save up at least at least 500 is highly recommended. So put that in your bank account and then you have to open up a broker, a brokerage account, all right, with a broker. Uh, some brokers, and again, I'm not going to recommend one over the other right now, uh, but just some of the more well-known ones will be E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, Interactive Brokers, Merrill Edge, Schwab, Fidelity, Ally, these are just a few. Trade Station, there are a whole bunch of them, all right? And so you can look those up on, on Google or wherever, look on a search engine, uh, and uh, you can call them or you can you know contact them and shop around. Find a broker that has certain things that I look for when I choose a broker. First of all, I'm looking for great customer service. Uh, if you look on the website of E-Trade or Fidelity or Schwab or whoever, and you call the number, uh, how friendly is the customer service? Uh, what kind of customer service do they have? Do they, do they even have customer service on the phone? Or do you have to just do it uh, on the web or through email or through a chat on the web? Um, personally, I like it when they have phone customer service available. Uh, what are the hours? What are the days? Is the customer service available 24-7 or is it just uh, during trading hours, like Monday through Friday, uh, you know, from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock or something like that? What are the hours? Because personally, I like for the customer service to be available as much as possible, okay? Uh, you also want to look at factors 
uh, when you choose a brokerage account or choose a broker, uh, you want to look at uh, their website. Do they have a good platform, as they say? Okay. Do they have charts available? Is it easy to use? Is it, is it easy to, to use their software? Do they have software available for charts and things like that and for trading and investing? And is it any good? Uh, is it fast? You don't want, you know, you don't want a website that's slow if you can help it. All right. Uh, other things you want to look at are trade execution, and I know that's that's more advanced, a more advanced concept. But uh, you know, you definitely want to get with a broker that uh, if you place an order for them to buy shares of stock or sell them, you want them to do it quickly and at a good price. Um, not slowly. You don't want them to take a long time to execute your order because prices move, okay? And time is, a, is of the essence. It's time sensitive uh, with these things, all right? And you want them to get it at a good price, all right? To execute or, f or fill your order at a good price. I know that's more complicated, but these are things I look for just to give you an idea. So, and you can have more than one brokerage account, okay? You can sign up for an account at Schwab and an account at E-Trade and an account at TD Ameritrade. Uh, you can have more than one. Don't worry about hurting their feelings. It's okay. <laughs> uh, that way, um, you'll have several brokers available to you. And if you don't like one broker, if you get sick and tired of them, you just don't like them anymore, you can easily switch your money to another broker uh, now there might be fees involved in switching brokers. Okay, so be aware of that. Be you know check the fees. That's another thing I look for, by the way. What are the fees with the broker? Do they have a lot of fees? Do they charge you for opening an account? They probably shouldn't. Uh, most of them don't. But if they do, that's something you want to be aware of. Do they charge fees for moving your funds to other brokers? A lot of them do. Uh, things like that. All right. So be aware. Definitely. Be a smart shopper when you shop around for a broker. Be picky, choose the best ones. And again, it's okay to have more than one brokerage account. Then when you choose your favorite brokerage account, you open, it, open up an account with them and then you have to transfer the funds, the money uh, from your bank account, whether it's Bank of America, Wells Fargo, uh, City, Citibank, Citigroup, whatever and then transfer those funds from your bank account, checking or savings or whatever. Uh, or it could be a retirement account, okay? It could be an IRA, that kind of thing. 401k, whatever. But you know, you can put it in an IRA if you want to and then transfer the funds over to E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, Schwab, Fidelity, whatever. Whatever brokerage you're choosing to put your money into. And it takes time. Uh, understand that it's a process. It's probably not going to happen <laughs> very, not going to happen instantaneously. All right. All these processes usually take a few days, uh, maybe even a couple weeks. So be patient with it. It takes time. Okay. But you don't have to be too patient with it. If, if it takes them forever, <laughs> if it takes them weeks and weeks and weeks and things are, you know, there are problems, uh, that's something to consider when it comes to choosing a broker, uh, whether, you know, they have uh, reasonable customer service that can guide you through the process quickly and efficiently. All right. So that's how you get started. Then once you have your brokerage account and it's funded with money, you have the funds in there, then uh, now it's different for every broker, but they you, you can call their customer service. Again, this is why I prefer brokers that have phone customer service and not just chat online that, or email, that kind of thing. And they can walk you through the process of buying shares of stock. And you can only buy shares of stock that you can afford. For example, if Amazon stock is selling for $1,600 per share, and you only have $500 in your account, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you if you have $500 in your in your investing or trading account, then you cannot buy shares of Amazon stock, which cost let's say $1,600 each per share. All right, so you can only buy shares of stock that you can afford to buy. Also, be aware that you're probably also going to pay uh, commissions. You're going to basically pay a fee to buy shares of stock and then you're probably going to pay commission uh, commissions to sell that stock. There are exceptions like Robinhood. Uh, you know, Robinhood uh, is supposedly free uh, stock trading. OK, so but be careful. Uh, you know, some people say, you know, some people like Robinhood. Some people are not into it. Uh, so more I would say more important than saving five dollars or seven dollars uh, to buy and sell a stock. More important than that is 
great customer service, a great platform, uh, you know, great trade execution, things like that. Uh, that's probably to me more important than just saving a little bit, a little bit of money here and there on the commissions. But that's just my my take on it. Uh, if you like Robinhood, great. You know, by all means, feel free to use that if you want to. All right, and there might be other fees involved. Uh, the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, might charge a small fee for your transactions. All right, uh, so check out, look into, and ask about fees. What fees are there for buying and selling stocks? Also, check to see if there is what's called an inactivity fee. All right. So, you know, some brokers, some brokerages might charge you if you start an account with them, open up an account and you don't use it for six months or a year. They might charge you money for that just for being inactive with that account. So be aware of these things. Ask questions. Ask about what are the fees? Is there an inactivity fee? What do you charge to buy and sell or, or trade uh, stocks, shares of stock? All right. Uh, if, if I want to transfer my money or close my account or move my IRA over, uh, it, what are the fees for that? Ask those questions. All right. And then generally speaking, you'll go on to either their software, you know, the trading platform uh, or, or just onto the website or the app. If it's Robinhood, it's probably going to be on your phone. Uh, so it might be an app that you'll go on to and, and there will be a screen there, some sort of screen where you can buy or sell, if you already own them, shares of stock. And, uh, you know, it, it'll give you, you know, hopefully, <laughs> it'll give you an indication of what you would be paying, how much, what the fees are, what the commissions are, and then you can make your decision before you execute or fill your order, okay, or before they, they execute or fill it, all right? So be careful. Know what you're buying, what you're selling, know what the fees are gonna be, uh, make sure you're happy with the customer service and the trade execution. Make sure that they you know, actually execute or fill your order quickly and at a good price. And uh, do your own due diligence. Do your research. It's okay to have more than one broker. And, uh, you know, just know what you're doing. All right. Don't just trust anybody except in the end you have to trust yourself and do your own research on all these things. All right. So I hope this was helpful to you. Again, every brokerage account has different ways of buying and selling stocks and shares of stock. It's gonna look different for every one of them. So you have to talk to their customer service, have them walk you through it, walk you through the process. If they're not willing to do that, then you might wanna choose another broker. All right, so my name is David Modell. This was an introduction on how to buy stocks, how to buy shares of stock. If you have any questions and you want some help with things like this, trading, investing, stocks, putting together a plan, you can email me at that email address, davidmodell at gmail.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and leave a comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell on YouTube so you can receive the latest updates on my financial educational videos. Thank you so much for watching and listening and I'll talk to you again soon.